Hello and welcome to the Shoot and Share Challenge for Kids Day 3 Challenge. And today we're going to look into some more rules of composition. Now, um, in the Zoom call earlier today for Day 2, we covered a little bit of talk about the rule of thirds was mentioned. So I wanted to look into that a little bit more so that we could decide how we could learn from it today. Now the rule of thirds is when you look at the picture with the third lines on. So let's get this set up. <coughs> we have a grid. We talked about it looking a bit like a checkers board, um, noughts and crosses, tic-tac-toe. So this is a piece of card. Do you see it's made of frame? So we've just got a piece of card and we've cut a window out of it and we've put some little um, indents in, some little V grooves that mean that when we put a string around it, so when the string goes all the way around the back and sellotapes off on the sides, or if you want ones that slide, we can just do it as a big loop that goes all the way around the back and then you can move it up and down if you don't put the notches in, but the notches keep it still. That's the easy version. The complex version is where when you've got your card, you don't put notches in and you have the string tied all the way around the back and with a knot, and then you can slide it down or up. So that the grid, instead of being exactly nine equal squares, you can have the lines come a little bit wider or a little bit closer together. Okay, so the way we do this, first off, measure a board around the edge. So this one I've measured out here is, um, about an inch which is 2.5 centimeters and I've just got a ruler marked a load of dots along there and then once I've got all my dots drawn a line across so to cut it out first off with your scissors you're going to have to you may need some help from a wonderful adult to get the first cut in because you're going to have to puncture a hole you might need some blue tack or something to put the cardboard on to put the scissors through but please ask your parents for help with this then once you've done that, we need to cut up until you get to the line. And from the line, and yes, I am a left-handed person because all the best people are. And I'm creative. So we are cutting it. So you now need to cut out. So you've got a line all the way to the top and bottom, but you need to cut this section out along those lines. Then you will have a nice hole that will give you this window and the window then we can wrap the string around. Now do you remember we talked about the notches? I've done the same thing. I have measured from the top of the card an exact distance so we want thirds. So you get the ruler, you measure how long your piece of cardboard is. Once you've measured how long it is, divide it by three and that is the number you measure down from, um, sorry, I lied. You want to measure the window hole. Measure the window hole, then divide that by three. And then that's why I've got this line here, so that I can see how far down to put the notch, a third of the way down. I've got one on the other side. And all you have to do to make the notch is cut up diagonally to it and down diagonally to it to make a V shape. See the V? So we go one, and then we go two and then pull it and you have your little V that the string can sit in. So you've got a V and it goes around the other one and that will keep it in place. Now, why is this important? Because when we look at pictures, one of the things that we see is where to put the um, the key composition points. Remember me putting my hands like this and across and trying to explain it? Well, it's probably actually easier if I grab up um, a photo that we did to show this. So, we have here, in the last challenge that we did that Levi was a part of, we actually looked at this and we drew some nice purple lines on it. So, I am just grabbing that photo up for you to see, so that you know what the aim is, is where that string crosses. Do you remember we had the two bits of string? Um, and that string then 
Ta-da! Yes, there we go. Awesome source. That string is where you want to aim to put the information, the key points. Um, and it is also... Ta -da 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 -da. My photo is hiding. It is where we want to put all of that important information. So if you look at this photo of a teddy that is a favourite thing, you see that the teddy is right in the middle of this photo. We have the line, this is our string on the thirds. And these circles where they cross, the point where the two lines intersect, that means where they go past each other, where they cross, this is where you want the points of interest. So centre gives one impact, but if you can put something on any one of those four cross points, hence why we hold the grid up before looking through your camera, or some cameras and some phones actually let you turn the grid on. So check if there's a setting that says turn on grid or rule of thirds. So this is what you're looking for, rule of thirds, or you might want one to say turn on grid. And then just check that the grid actually looks like this one with the two lines top and bottom, the two lines side to side. Now what we can do with this um, teddy is we can actually move him. Do you see that if we move him so he's now running along this line and his legs where the hip joint is cross where that is, this is a more, and then this line is now running across this brick. This now becomes, and the grass, do you see the grass here, is running across at this level. So the grass is at a third, there's a brick at a third, and the teddy is now on the third line. So just by moving the composition and moving the camera over, it becomes a more pleasing and a good photo. So that's how to use the rule of thirds. Now you've made your grid, your challenge is to go outside or around the house, wherever you're able to get to today, and take some, choose a subject and you're going to take a photo after you hold the grid up and you learn and see where as you move it around what diff the different photos look like when it lines up along the lines of the string and when it lines up um, on one of those points where they intersect. Eyes work really well. Um, you know somebody's here putting the line down them and keeping that blank and then having it on their eye that is going to be a pleasing composition like that. So that's grand, but the next thing I wish to do is quickly grab up some photos to show you the second part of the exercise. So, oh, I just closed the window, that was helpful. Bear with me a minute. Because I have prepared some photos, I have been out around my garden and... Um, Within that, day three, I have taken some photos to use as examples. So here we are. We are in. <laughs> They're not quite in order. But that's fine, they will do anyway, because we'll use this software instead. Bingo! Right, tech today, tech. Here we go, awesome photos coming right up. So, this is my wonderful plum tree in the garden. Got lots of plums on it, lots of green. But all you can see is a mash of green. So we've got green trees in the background, we've got green trees in the foreground, the plums are green, the leaves are green, everything's green. You've got a little bit of a branch coming up and a bit of a branch going around and we inherited these trees and they weren't well kept and we're gradually able to chop bits off and we're getting them the shape we need them to be. But pruning aside, because they look an interesting shape, I was like, I just took a photo of the scene just in front of me, just everything I could see. Then I went, let's try and make it more interesting. So I thought, oh, I quite like that cross branch. Let's move that up. So I've got, do you see, I've got the highest branch on the rule of thirds. That's coming down just here. 
and then I went for having some cross movement along here. So you've got this point which the eye really focuses on because it sticks out as the brown and then this branch and this big leaf point over here. So we sort of had two lines going on and I was like, eh, it's okay. So what I did was I'd moved close up and I'd looked up a bit. So then I changed my view again and I looked. So if you look back at the first one, do you see in the middle just here, there's this branch, this pleasing branch of plums. So I looked at this and I was like, right, okay. I can actually see some details. It's less of everything and we've gone a bit closer and it's given us something to focus at. We've got some leaves a bit out of focus in the foreground and some leaves a bit out of focus in the background because I clicked on the screen. If you're using foam, you can often click on the screen to choose where to focus. So I said, I want to focus on these plums. Okay. If you're on a camera, there's like a half press on the shutter to focus, or you might have manual focus where you can move a box around to press on that. You might need to get your camera guide out or get some help from your mum or your dad with that one. But, sorry, your mum, if you're American, your mum, if you're English. This is a better photo. I'm liking this, but this is a little bit towards the centre, and I still think we can make this better. So... Guess what? I walked closer. I just literally moved with my feet. So we've gone from positioning to moving closer to moving closer. It's not all about zoom. Sometimes it's about physically getting closer. So this has a little bit more impact, but I thought, you know what? There's a lot of mess going on over here, a lot of stuff. So I moved in closer still and got rid of the foreground a lot more. So you can still feel you're looking through because you've got these plums over here they're right on the edges, they're out of the way, and you've got the bit of the trees at the back. But do you see now, I've got two lines, almost down the rule of thirds, and this massive bunch of plums just here comes exactly where the lines intercross. So that makes, I think, that compared to our first photo, remember this one? That's a lot more high impact. And then this one's a bit different, but still better than the first. So let's do it again. Let's find something else. Here is a um, pile of fence panels being held down by bricks and a tarpaul tarpaulin keeping some stuff clean underneath. And it's like, not the best photo, a bit of a rubbish tip. Building site going on at the moment. So I was like, well, let's change the angle up. So I got low and I looked along. Can you see that? So I literally moved closer and dropped myself. So I was, camera was down lower by here and was looking along it more interesting photo and we've got sort of that repetition of lines and because they're on an angle that's quite pleasing um because any that's another composition one if you can get angles from the corners so one comes into one comes into the bottom right corner and one goes into the top left corner but this brick is still distracting it gets rid of the repetition so i took the brick off the pile don't move anything you're not allowed to move. Only move things you can move and put everything back where you found it afterwards. So this makes for a more interesting composition, but I thought, can I change it? If I changed the angle a bit and made the slant more, would that be even more interesting? So now we've got diagonals right the way across and that changes it again. So literally move and recomposition. Do you see what's going on? So let's have another look. Here's a fence panel. That needs to go up just in front of this tree and the and the path lent up against the shed with a fir tree sticking up at the back and we're like okay interesting but not the best photo let's try twisting in so I tried to bring in a bit more of the the diagonal lines so you've got those leading lines that lead up to this plank where it joins and this intersection do you see it's also in the top right corner so you can be Although this is diagonal, it's pointing towards this corner. And although this is diagonal, it's pointing. So we're using those circles. Do you remember where the points crossed? I've got a main interest point on one of those. But it's still just a fence panel. So I thought, what if I look down it and get some more of the fir tree in? So I've kind of got the fir tree in on the, the right third. And I've got the fence panel with the diagonal line leading in so that where the circle would be, we've got the point of interest, the thing that's most interesting. I thought we can make this better. So I was like, I can actually get a rule of thirds in. I can get that line. See the fir tree? And we've got the wood slanting down with the uh, post coming up. And I was like, so there we go. And then I was like, well, here's some interesting flowers. Let's take a photo of the flowers. So I took the whole scene. And I was like, mm, that, the bottom of the fir tree looks a bit dead. I don't like that. So let's zoom in a bit. So we moved closer. 
But then guess what happened? I saw there was a distracting thing. So sometimes you've got to move if there's something distracting in the background. See this post, it's quite light, so your eyes are like, oh, I'm looking at that. So I literally got down lower and looked up at it. Then I got rid of the post. You can just see it in the background just here. But because I got lower and looked up, the uh, flowers appeared to get taller. But now I've got some really light spots next to the flowers, which are a bit distracting. So I moved around a bit as well and turned the camera from portrait to lan uh, landscape to portrait. And now do you see, we've hidden the post, we've not got the distracting light and you've got the flowers coming in and they're coming up to the top third and you've got this line coming up on the left. So just moving and trying, I think you're starting to get the idea. So just one or two more examples. This is the top path and the lower zigzag, the lower path coming in. But you've got some um, a pallet that's holding up and some spare paving slabs and some rocks and some basically bright things. So this piece of wood, which was what I liked, the really interesting subject of the photo. So I got closer. Now you may need a macro mode or a flower mode on your camera to be able to get too close because if you move your camera really close it can go out of focus. And then I moved sideways to get rid of, do you see here there's still the green leaves, so I twisted the camera diagonal and hid the green leaves with the post so when I changed it was just brown so everybody focuses on the log. And final example, the wood stack by the side of the house. Um, the wood stack, and I was like, I don't like that chair. So I got rid of it and I was like, it's still not quite what I'm going for. It's, it's, I've got my things coming in, but let's see if we can make it more interesting. So I got lower and I put the line where the logs end. But if you see, this comes in sort of on the third and this piece of wire that's holding the logs up then runs again where that rule third is so I've got two thirds and the intersection is where it joins the other log stack and the other intersection is the bottom corner so we've got two intersections and we've got a line and then I zoomed in a bit more to make it a bit more um, interesting because you've got the close-up because it gets rid of any clutter so I walked up closer and then this is the one if you looked at the main wall do you see that first pack of stuck pile of logs and I went well let's put the paving line on the bottom and let's put the strut of metal on the right so that makes for a more interesting composition and I thought well let's get rid of the weeds and let's just have the wood so third line and looking from up high looking down so I'd walked even closer I was like I really like these logs let's take a close-up of just the logs but then the wire was coming across in the bottom so I thought okay well if I move round we can get rid of that so I twisted round and there you go so your challenge is for day three, you are first off, come on mouse, come on, there we are, to look at composition. And then secondly, when you're composing it, I want you to move, move, move. You're going to zoom with your feet, not just your camera. You can zoom with your camera as well, but remember, if you get the camera zoomed in and you're close, the thing might go out of focus. So you need to walk closer to it if your camera won't zoom you can always use your feet but change angles twist look higher look lower and i want you to take a before photo the whole thing i want you to take at least two different photos that show me that you've moved closer and that you've worked on putting um, either the rules of thirds in or you've got some diagonals in okay so you're going to take the whole scene you are going to get closer and change the angle and then you are going to try and use composition and use the third lines. If you need to remind yourself, don't forget, you can always use the piece of card that you've made when you put the middle out and you've put your string across it. If you don't have string, you could always just use a glue stick and glue the line, but you'll need to cut the spare line out about half the width. You'll, you'll need it to just be very skinny and then you can just stick it over as if it's the string, gluing it on the sides. So there you go day three challenge. I can't wait to see your photos. Take care guys.